Science for Anatomy, uh, the, in, uh, the event coach training session. Um, my name is Felicia Scott, and I am the co-supervisor for this event with, along with my colleague, Mary Kelly. I've been supervising this event for more than 15 years. I've been a coach, so I've been a parent. <laughs> I've been a coach. I've been the whole uh, caboodle in terms of uh, Science Olympiad, except for like the big people the head people, the head honchos. So for this event, uh, this is the elementary science Olympiad, A is for anatomy. And so I'm just going to go over a few things with you today. So this year, we're looking at the nervous system and the cardiovascular system. For the nervous system, this includes the brain, the parts of the brain, as well as the primary functions of those parts, the spinal cord, the neuron, the spinal reflex, and for the spinal reflex, you have to know the path of signal transmission, nerve signaling through that pathway. Then we also have a few special senses that would include the eye and the ear. For the eye, you have to know the path of light. Well, the students have to know the path of light, and therefore, if they know it, you probably know it too. And for the ear, you have to know the path of a sound. So that's uh, the nervous system. So again, brain, spinal cord, neuron, spinal reflexes, and uh, two special senses, ear and eye. Now for the cardiovascular system, the main focus is on the heart portion of the cardiovascular system, and then any major blood vessels that are associated with the heart. So they have to know the difference between right and left in terms of the heart. They have to know the chambers and the valves. And then again, the major blood vessels of the heart. And then they should also be familiar with the path of blood through the heart. Okay, So um, those are our subjects for this year. Um, in case you didn't know, for this event, you can have teams of one or two students. Um, those students should the way I like to recommend is that you have one person that is an expert in the subject matter of maybe the nervous system, and then you have another team member that's the expert in the cardiovascular system, such that if there's any, you know, non-agreement, right, uh, that they know to defer to the other person who's the subject expert in that area. So, in terms of how we run the event, we always begin on time. We're pretty prompt. So we make a, we have the students line up outside the exam room and we uh, line them up in the order of team number. And then when they get into the room, we actually have the um, zip grade Scantron answer sheet that is already pre-labeled uh, with the team numbers and we have them to verify that. And then uh, we read them some instructions that I'm gonna go over with you today. And the way the exam is set up is that it's 22 stations. Each station has four questions. In the first 21 stations, it's all multiple choice. And then the 22nd station is four questions where spelling counts. And that 22nd station, we only use as a tiebreaker station. And so we tell the students that in advance. So they know that, you know, most of the questions that they're going to you know, be judged on are those multiple choice questions. And we don't want them stressing out over the spelling, right? That 22nd station. Um, in terms of what we use to set up the exam, we have models, we have charts, and we very seldom use pictures. So this is one difference you may see between the um, regional competition and some of the local competitions. So in the local competitions, you're more apt to see pictures like from a textbook or some type of workbook or from online. In our exam, we typically 99% of the exam our models, and then every now and then we use a chart. And so we make these things available for the teams to utilize over in the learning center at Macomb. And I'll go over that and uh, some of the rules that govern going to the learning center, when you can go to the learning center, 
uh, how long the materials will be available to the teams and the coaches. So for each station, each of the 22 stations, the students will only get one minute. That's it. And then we rotate. So it's important that the students know that only one team will start at question number one. Every other team in the room is starting at a different station. And so we try to tell them in the beginning, uh, circle the number of the station you're starting at, and we do a quick um, perusal, a walk around of the room to make sure that, you know, they understand where they're marking their first um, answer on the zip grade answer sheet. Uh, the other thing is, is that it's important for you guys to uh, familiarize your students with that zip grade answer sheet because the numbering isn't like continuous, right? It goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up. And so students can sort of get, you know, thrown off in terms of the numbering. So it's very important that you practice with that zip grade answer sheet. And an example of the zip grade answer sheet is online. So you can just go online and print a bunch of them off and then just have your students uh, practice. So that's a one another thing, the zip grade answer sheet. They'll need two number two pencils. If their lead breaks, we usually have extras in the room so that, you know, there's no need to panic because your lead broke. Um, the other thing is, is that we don't allow any clipboards no cell phones, so no extra stuff is allowed to come into the room. And I, I or myself or my colleagues will try to make sure that when we line them up, all they have is the two number two pencils and that's it. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of the overall setup of the exam. So now what I would like for you to do is to focus your attention on the document you see here. So it basically, you know, tells you that we're meeting today, January 20th. It tells you who the two um, event supervisors are. And then it gives you some information about that, the learning center at Macomb. And this is at Center Campus. So myself and my colleague, we work at Center Campus. So we're very familiar with the people who run this learning center there. And so all the models that we send over there are actually models from our labs. And uh, so we ask that you guys be very careful when you use them. Uh, you're not allowed to, to mark on them. So no markers, no pencils. Usually we provide some wooden pointers for you to work with. So the learning center uh, that the materials will be at is on center campus. And I provided the uh, location, which is building C room 116, it's actually shared with the library. So one half is the library, the other half is the learning center. And then right when you walk into the learning center, there's a front desk. That's where you're gonna go and ask, you know, that's where you're gonna call and make your appointments. But that's also where you're gonna go and bring your ID so and tell them that you're there to study for AS4 Anatomy and you like access to some of the uh, models that are available. Now, they're not going to give you all the models at once. So you have to come prepared in terms of, you know, your plan of focus. So you may say, OK, in this section, we're only going to look at the neuron. So you may have them look at pictures of the neuron before you get to the learning center so that they're familiar with the terms. And then while you're at the learning center, you're using those models to quiz them on. So um, they're not gonna give you like three boxes of materials. You're gonna have to tell them exactly what you want at the front desk. So the learning center um, front desk number is 286-2203, it's 586 number. You can start making appointments on Monday, February the 5th. So you can call and sign up, but you will not be allowed to visit the Learning Center and look at the materials until the following Monday, February the 12th. So you sign up and then you look forward to going to the Learning Center with your team and you show up no earlier than February the 12th, that Monday. And there's a reason behind that because the first unit exams for biology, all our biology classes are the week of the fifth. And so I'm trying to avoid, you know, you guys showing up with a bunch of crazed, stressed college students. Okay, so next week, 
everything will be calm. You can go in there. You'll probably have the whole learning center to yourself because they just got through their exams the, the previous week. So in terms of the hours of the learning center, this semester they're open Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. On Tuesday from 8 to 10 p.m., so Tuesday is their late night, Friday 8 to 4, and then Saturday 8 to 4, but Sunday they are closed. So on Sunday, you will not be able to go to the learning center. So that's one weekend day that you don't, that's not available for you and your um, students to actually go and study the materials. These hours are subject to change and seeing that they're subject to change, I actually included the website. The learning center is closed during spring break. And so our spring break is the first week of March. So um, I think it begins March 2nd. So you can't go there the week of March um, 2nd. And I know that's different. Well, actually it's a good thing because that's different from the spring break or the winter break for most of the students. So that's a good thing. The materials available at the Learning Center will include some diagrams. So I usually put together a little study packet and I'll try to put a lot of copies of that over there. These study packets are also uh, online at the Macomb Science Olympiad website. And these are any study packets that I've used in the previous year. So they're posted already. You'll be able to borrow, borrow the models. And then I will have maybe a couple of atlases uh, from, you know, that have really nice glossy pictures of the structures available as well. Again, Materials in the Learning Center will not be available until Monday, February the 12th, but you can start making appointments on Monday, February the 5th. Okay, so make an appointment, check in at the front desk upon arrival. Appointments can be made starting the week of February 5th. Please do not call to make appointments before February the 5th. And this happens every year. You know, I'll get a call from the Learning Center and they'll say, well, some parent called here and said that you said, and I'll say, no, I actually forward them the documents that I'm presenting it to you. And I'll say, look at the document that I used during the uh, workshop. It specifically says that they can call on February, the beginning on February 5th, but they can't show up until February the 12th. And you have to have an appointment. So um, don't just show up. Because they're not gonna, the they're not gonna give you access to the materials. They'll, the first thing they're gonna look is they're gonna take your ID, and then they're gonna look to see if you made an appointment. And if you didn't make an appointment, nine times out of ten, they're gonna turn you away. Okay, so please make sure you make an appointment. You need a picture ID. You have to either have a state ID or a license, whatever formal government ID you have, you have to have one. You should only bring the children that are teammates, okay? So, you you know, I know I had young kids once upon a time, right? It's hard to find a babysitter, right? So uh, get that set up in advance. So you can't bring the teammates, the two children who are on the team, plus one or two other kids, right? Because you should really be focusing on utilizing that time with your with your students i call them students or your children that you're coaching uh, appointments are limited to one or two hours at a time okay no refreshments or snacks are allowed in the learning center the materials that will be given as student study aids are fragile right so and you'll see that some of them you know they've been handled quite a bit and if something breaks that you, while you were using it, just tell the person at the desk. And then what will happen is they'll call me and they'll say, Professor Scott, you know, one of the models broke. Can you bring us another one? Right. So don't don't freak out because things break all the time. If something gets broken, just make sure the front desk is aware of it. And then I'll bring a better model or a replacement over there within the next week. This year. We'll be holding another anatomy workshop because we've changed um, one of the subject matters again. And that anatomy workshop will be held on Friday, February the 16th. 
It will be held in a different building because now we're going back to the science building, which is building J on center campus. And um, it's newly renovated, so you'll get to see the inside. It's very nice. And we will meet in room 112. To attend the workshop, you have to sign up for a specific time. And so for that workshop on February the 16th, you're going to sign up at Macomb Science Olympiad website, www.macombso.org. And then there will be three sessions available, 5.30, 6.15, or 5.30, sorry, 6.10, or 6.50. You have to sign up for one. Last time we had um, a little issue where, you know, people were running late. So if you think you're going to run late, sign up for the later one okay. because we had or we had people trying to show up early to get in an earlier session because maybe the parent or the coach got off a little early and they just showed up and then we didn't have room. So if you if you're going to run late, you know, be it you get off work late, sign up for that later one and there won't be that many people in the late ones. People try to come to the earlier sessions on the Friday. If you have a question regarding this event, you have to post it at the Macomb Science Olympiad website. What happens there, you post a question there, everyone gets to see that question, which means everyone gets to see my response to that question. So you post it, they kick it out to me, I post, I send back an answer, and then they post that answer for everyone. And that system has worked beautifully over the last couple of years, right? So everyone, you know, you're not the only one who probably has that same question. So everyone gets to see the answer. Okay, Manish, we're gonna go to the um, next page. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, oh, I can't hear your question. You may have to put it in chat. It, you, you went out. You go ahead. OK, got it. OK, so um, what you see here is are the instructions that the students will. Um, well, not this one. The next one are the instructions that the students will see on the day of the competition. These instructions are mainly for you to be aware of what's going to happen. So number one, don't be late. Be prompt. If a student is running late from a previous event. We try to have our event very early so that we don't have that problem. So if a student is running late for some reason, hopefully at least one team member is there to show up to start off. And then if the second person comes, usually they'll say, oh, there's another teammate. They're running late. We know what to um, expect. To, we expect that second person to come in, so we'll be stand, someone will be standing by the door waiting on that person. But please try to be prompt. Again, you'll need uh, they'll need two number two pencils for each team. No clipboards, no cell phones. Your students will come in one door and then they will exit a different door. So we have signs and then even as I'm letting them in, I tell you or someone will tell you that this is the interest that they come in, but they're going to exit in the big auditorium where the award ceremony is. And this is just to make sure that the traffic is uh, one directional. So they come in one door, they exit another door. Students should be allowed to practice using that Scantron type answer sheet, that zip grade answer sheet filling them in properly. So we're still having problems with um, students not filling in that uh, zip grade answer sheet. So you, they have a bubble, right? And they have to shade in that entire bubble. So we're still getting students who are like circling the entire bubble, putting an X through the bubble, putting a check mark through the bubble. We try to survey the room to make sure everyone is marking it correctly. But every now and then we might miss, you know, a team or two. And so literally we have to stop there and say, oh, no, you can't do that. Make sure you you shade in the entire bubble. OK, so please practice using the answer sheets with your students. Number four, students should try to erase as few answers as possible. Why? Because it's a 
very difficult to completely get rid of those erasers. And sometimes this, the way we grade it is an optical, like an optical, it's a picture really with our cell phones. That's where the uh, key is. And it may pick up those extra marks on their Scantron. So they have to be very careful. Number five, here's that clipboard thing, right? So we keep saying about the clipboards because students are bringing in these clipboards and it's distracting because, you know, they're moving every minute, they're moving to another station. So they leave the clipboard behind. Then all of a sudden they remember they had a clipboard, right? And so now they distract it because now they're trying to figure out where the clipboard at. So no clipboards, no scrap paper, no backpacks, no purses, no cell phones, just the students and number two pencils. That's all they need. There will be a total of 22 stations. The student will be answering four multiple cho choice questions per station in one minute. Except for the tiebreaker, they're going to have to write out the answers in one minute. So if one student is a better speller than the other one, then they need to get that straight before they get in the competition. Okay. We don't want them in the competition, you know, fussing with each other, right? Tugging over the pencil or the answer sheet. So you decide who's the best speller before you get to the competition. You decide who's the subject expert uh, before you get to the competition so that the other person knows to defer to that student for a particular type of question. Uh, what else? Students are not allowed to talk during the competition, but they can point to the correct answer or they can use some other nonverbal communication. This is so, it's really entertaining to, tr to watch young people try not to talk, okay? And you say no whispering and their whispering is talking, right? So they don't really get that idea. So practice the nonverbal communication <laughs> with the students. And, and, you know, they're whispering and then the next team, you know, because we're very close together in the room, the next team over either before or after them can hear what they're saying. And then all of a sudden they're saying, well, somebody's copying what I just said. No, you have to have nonverbal communication. So a lot of the students use the eraser to point to the answer that they want to choose, or they may use their fingers. One is A, two is B, three is C, four is D, so on, okay? So, but they have to get that nonverbal communication uh, worked out before the day of the competition. And it's so cute, right? They're so cute. I love the elementary uh, AS4 Natalie Me event because they know a lot. Student, these little, these young people are like sponges. They, they just, they just soak up this information, and they're really just so pleased to be there. They're excited to be there, and that brings up my other point. This should be exciting for them, right? This should be fun, right? It should not be a stressful situation for the students. Everyone walking out of there should say, hey, I know I did great, okay? Even though you may find out in the end they didn't get a perfect score, but they learned something along the way. So part of our job as parents, as coaches, is to just keep encouraging them, right? Because I usually tell my students, this is something you can use no matter what you end up doing as a career, right? A participating in Science Olympiad is such a beautiful thing to do for these students. Okay, uh, so no talking, nonverbal communication. It's a standing competition. So unless uh, we have a, a special need that is brought to our attention beforehand, Everyone stands the entire competition. And what we have is when they walk in, they'll see colored tape that basically um, marks off their working area. And so sometimes they want to lean over and lay out on the table and they can't do that. So make sure that they are you know, aware that they're going to be working in a very confined space to answer these questions. Uh, so it's a standing competition. Students are not allowed to touch any model or picture during the competition. The stations have to remain in the same position for all competitors. And this is another hard thing for these students. So here's the thing. Up until the day of the competition, 
they've been touching stuff. They've been moving things around, looking at the different models from all different angles. And then now in the day of competition, you know, someone is there is in there saying you can't touch anything, right? And so my suggestion is that you guys towards towards the end of the middle of April, towards the end of April, you guys start setting up a mock competition for them. I'm not talking 88 questions. I'm talking maybe 12 questions, right? Where you tag some structures, or if you just have pictures, you tag the pictures with an arrow. You make like A, B, C, D, make it multiple choice questions. The last station uh, is a correct spelling, write your answers out, and then, you get them into the idea of how the event is going to be run. So towards the middle of April, towards the middle or end of April, start like getting them ready for the day of the competition. Um, what else? Students will not be allowed to return to any station. So I always tell them, if you don't know what it is, make an educated guess. You need to mark something on that um zip grade answer sheet why because it allows them to hold their place so if they start skipping answers because they didn't know the answer or they start uh start uh skipping you know numbers because they didn't know the answer it's going to throw them off in terms of their numbering so always make an educated guess okay um number 11 Parents and coaches are not allowed into the competition room. Okay. Okay. This is another biggie, right? So we're really on a time crunch, okay? Like between, you know, events. So we run several sessions of AS4 Anatomy. And so we clear one team out, and then we have like five to 10 minutes to reset for the next team. So parents cannot come into the exam room. If you want to see, how the event is going to run, show up at the workshop on February the 16th, and then you'll see how we do it. We'll do a little, it won't be as big as the actual event, but it'll be a small version of how we run the actual event. And so, you know, we'll run on the day of the workshop, we'll take, we'll read the instructions, we'll take your students in, and then after the they go through the event, we'll invite the parents into the room so that they can see, you know, how we tag things, you know, how the students are going to be moving through the room. Okay, last thing, number 12, please have students use the restroom before coming into the competition. Biggie. Okay, so if a student for some reason gets into the competition room and they have to go to the bathroom, we're going to let them go to the bathroom. And we're usually very close to a bathroom. They will be allowed to back, to come back into the exam room, but they will not see the stations that we continue to proceed past. Okay, So they will, if they have to use the bathroom, they'll be allowed to, use, uh, to leave to use that bathroom, but they won't get any extra time to go back and look at the questions that their colleague, their partner answered already. Okay, so that's some of the instructions that you guys should be aware of. And then the last document, page three, Manish, a page three. So these are the exact, thank you. These are the exact instructions that the students will be read on the day of the competition. And so myself or one of my colleagues will stand up there and say this, and then we'll say, do you guys have any questions? And usually somebody will raise their hand and ask a question and now one of us will answer the question and then we'll say, let's go us, right? And then we start. We start and pretty much proceed with no interruptions. And then at the end, someone stands at the back door. We say, have a great day. We collect their uh, zip grade answer sheets and that's the end of the competition. Okay. That's all I have for you guys today. Manish, uh, did you want to open it up for questions? Do you yes, guys have any questions? No, go for it. I have a question. Yes. 
Um, quick question about the pathways. The on the website, there doesn't it doesn't click to go to anything. Is something going to be filled in on that one, or do we just have to so, find it out? So usually, I'll post a, a little um, an extra study sheet for the pathways. Okay. So I don't know. I'll check to make sure if it's if it's there or not. Usually, it's a typed up thing. Even for the parts of the brain. I have a typed up form that gives you the parts of the brain and the functions they have to know. And then I have uh, on the same form, I'll have the path of light, the path of sound, and then I'll also put the path of blood. Okay, I just didn't see yeah. it to be able to click on anything, so. Okay, okay. I'll check to make sure, but yeah. It's Thank you. A, it's just the document with no figures on it. It's just some oh. typed up instructions, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any others? I had a question. Um, it says that you need to know the flow of blood in the heart. Do you also have to know the do you have to know the flow of blood to other parts of the body or just no. in the heart? No. So we we basically started the like coming in superior inferior vena cava into the right atrium. And then once you get out of the um, aorta, we're good. So just through the heart. Thanks. And so that information will also be on that typed up sheet for you. And I'll make sure it's there. Also, this might be more of a technical question, but um, I was just confused because when we are looking at different pictures of the heart, um, are the cardiac vein, like, because it mentions the cardiac vein, is that the same as the coronary veins? Like, okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, okay. The, the norm, the normal terms are coronary arteries, cardiac veins. And every now and then you'll see a book that says coronary veins, but that's not the normal terminology. It's coronary arteries, cardiac veins. Okay, I understand. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, some, I, yeah, I don't know. And let me just say this in advance. So usually arteries and veins go in pairs, like with the same name, like coronary, well, like um, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein. But every now and then you'll run, a, you'll, you'll see a pair where one name is one thing and the other is another. Okay, so don't be surprised when you see that. I have a question. Yes. On the 16th, do we bring our team with us or is it just for yes. the coaches? No, no, it's for the it's for the teams. So it's the coach and the students. So the students will be the ones to go into the to the practice room first. So you guys will be in a classroom. So we'll all meet together in a classroom. You'll be given some instructions. I'll take some questions or someone will take questions for you and then Someone else will take the, the students into the practice exam. And then that, that takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And then they'll tell the parents, you can go and in, into the, the practice room with the students. And so we give you guys a chance to see the questions. And let me just say this, okay, don't stress out that, oh, they need to know all this before the workshop. The way we do the workshop is we, you know, on one side, there's the questions, and then when you guys come in, we have them flip to the other side. That's where the answers are. So nothing is graded. We don't collect anything. It's just so that they can get an idea of how the event is run. Any yeah, other I questions? <clears throat> I totally agree with what Felicia says. Right? This is supposed to be not stressful. Yeah, this not is supposed stressful. to be fun. And if we make it fun for kids, they will want to do more science. <clears throat> Sweet. I have a question. Yes. Um, so at each station, there's four, there's four questions at each station for them to answer. Is it four questions on the same model or is it, could it be multiple models? It could be multiple models. And for ones with the pathway, so usually we try to make sure I put a star by the question so that they know sometimes that 
you know, this question doesn't have a model. Or it'll okay. have a Thank model you. where, let's say the left atrium is tagged on the heart and it may, the question may be, after leaving this chamber, what is the next destination? Where does the blood go next? And so if okay. they're not reading the question, they'll pick left atrium, right? When it should be left ventricle. So there so could be multiple to, sets of um, like choice answer choices for them to choose from at, yes. at a single station. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, one model may have two questions. One model could have three questions. It's just depend on it just depends on how we set it up. Thank you. You're welcome. I did have one more question. So I know in previous years, um, the this event has focused on the skeleton and the muscular system. So is there going to be any like past questions like covering other parts of the anatomy or are we just focusing on this? Nope, just these two subjects, nervous system and cardiovascular system. So now each year we rotate out one of the systems because what was happening is that you would have some students who were on, maybe they even started off as alternates, right? And then they moved up to the main team. And so they would actually have an advantage over, you know, teams that just started studying that material. So the way we do it now is that every year, something new should be learned by every team. Okay, thank you. So we sort of took away the, you know, the advantage that some of the older students had over the younger students, right? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So yeah, no skeletal system, no muscles. It's strictly what's on the study guide, on the list of the structures. Yeah. Everybody should know where this is posted. It's on our website, macomeso.org. And I, I came in a couple minutes late. So the document that you showed earlier, is that going to be sent to the, the head coaches? It They're all posted on the website. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you guys for coming today and tell your, I, I hope to see you on February the 16th, right? It'll be a lot of fun, right? And it'll be very informative for you as well as your um, children, the teammates.